Hello, today we're going to start off Unit 9 by talking about entropy. So entropy is a way that we measure the amount of randomness or disorder in a particular system. Um, it's a kind of a weird concept because it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult for us to imagine as something that we're measuring. But um, for the AP chemistry exam, if you know that it's the amount that it is disordered or disorganized, then you will be all set disorder. Okay. Now, is, we're going to use the letter S to indicate entropy. And if you have a change in entropy that is positive, that means you have more disorder. It's getting more disorganized. If you have a value of delta S that's negative, you will have less disorder or more organized. Um, delta S typically has the unit uh, joules per Kelvin, like most of the time you're going to see it as in joules per Kelvin. Um, so you'll need to be careful when you're um, relating entropy to enthalpy, which I know sounds very similar, but enthalpy is usually given in kilojoules. So you need to be careful there. Entropy is typically given in joules per Kelvin. Um, you should also know that it has to do with what we call microstates. Um, so Let's look at a situation where you have um, a gas. Let's say you have two particles of a gas, and I'm going to use uh, green and blue. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, in, in one situation, both of the gas particles happen to be on one side of the container. In another situation, you might have um, the blue on one side and the green on the other. Or in a different scenario, the green could be on one side and the blue could be on the opposite. Oops. Or they could both be on the other side of the container. Oops. Green and blue. So just based on motion, you have all of these different possible locations or possible states um, for these gas particles. So each one of those would be a microstate. The more microstates it is, the more disorder there is. So imagine gases have a lots of possible microstates because they can move around the container a lot. And solids tend to have fewer microstates because there's less motion. But the more particles you have, the more possibilities there are and the more microstates there are. So it becomes very um, complicated. And it's not just due to location either. It has to do with um, a lot of things like uh, motion, how fast they're going, and um, position and size of the particles as well. So it becomes really complicated, but we're going to kind of simplify it down to just the um, factors that you need to know for the AP exam, um, which tend to be pretty logical. So the first factor we're going to talk about is states of matter, which I kind of mentioned in the previous slide. Um, we have solids, liquids, gases focus on those. Solids tend to have uh, the lowest amount of entropy. Gases tend to have the highest amount of entropy with liquids in the middle. Um, that's because gases are free to move around. They don't have as many intermolecular forces. So um, you can have more potential uh, microstates or more disorganized. Okay. Solids tend to be stuck together, the most intermolecular forces, and the most organized. Um, so that's how you would relate entropy to states of matter. The next factor we want to look at um, is in a chemical reaction, and um, we want to look at the number of moles of reactants or products, or the number of particles, really. So if I have a reaction like this, um, A plus B yields uh, 2C plus D, those are my reactants and my products, if we're just looking at the number of particles, everything else is the same, you have two particles on the reactant side, but you have three particles on the product side, two Cs and one D. So if we're comparing these ones, the reactants have a lower entropy, products have a higher entropy, just because there's more particles, so there's more um, potential like variations in how they're set up, so there's more microstates, um, or that's more disorganized. The next factor we'll talk about is temperature. If I have a low temperature, the particles are moving slower. Um, versus a high temperature, the particles are moving faster. Remember, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. 
So at lower temperatures, they're moving slower, so they will have less entropy. They're less disorganized. Um, at higher temperatures, they tend to have more disorder or more entropy. Another example would be if you're dissolving or dissociating um, particles into a solvent. Um, let's use an example like if you have um, just a simple salt um, dissolving in water will form sodium ions and chloride ions, and that's dissociation. So it's splitting apart into separate ions. It's becoming more disordered, less disordered. Um, but it doesn't even have to be uh, dissociating for us to still have a change in entropy. You could have something like sugar, C6H12O6, glucose, a solid glucose. If you dissolve it in water, it does not break down into ions uh, because it's a polar covalent molecule, but it does dissolve. It forms um, hydrogen bonds with water. Um, but anyway, it, instead of being, you know, this solid um, that's really organized and all put together, it's going to split apart into separate molecules at least. Um, because it's aqueous, so it's going to distribute kind of throughout the water. And so this one will have more entropy versus the solid. Um, the last factor I want to talk about is um, with gases in particular, when we're looking at the pressure and volume of a gas. So um, let's imagine we have a, a large container and we have a couple particles of our gas versus a, um, so let's draw a smaller container, I'll make it very clearly smaller, smaller container. This one has a greater volume and a lower pressure. This container has a smaller volume and therefore a larger pressure. Now we have the same molecules inside and they're, they're same temperature, same um, moles of a gas, all that stuff, just looking at volume and pressure. When you have um, the larger volume and lower pressure, the particles have more space to move around in, and they have more potential different locations that they could be, and um, they can be more disorganized with this larger space to move around in. So that will uh, lead to a greater entropy. Um, but when you have a smaller space, there's fewer potential microstates, and therefore it will have a lower entropy. So just be aware of those, and this is for gases only. Um, liquids and solids are not affected as much by volume and pressure changes. Okay, so for each of the following pairs, choose the substance with the higher entropy and explain. So for the first example, um, carbon dioxide gas or carbon dioxide solid, the gas is going to have more entropy, it's more disorganized, it's free to move around, fewer intermolecular forces. Um, for the next example, we have Helium gas at 2 atm or helium gas at 0 0.02 atm. Well, this one's going to have the greater entropy. It has a lower pressure, um, so it has um, more space to move around and um, can have more potential microstates. So it will have less, um, so have a greater amount of entropy. And then this one, uh, when we're comparing calcium carbonate or calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, effectively this is let it, making us look at the reactants and the products. Um, because calcium carbonate can decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, in this situation, the products will have more entropy. Um, that's because it splits apart into multiple particles, so two moles of products versus just one mole of the reactant. More particles, more disorganized, greater entropy. Okay, here's our other example. Um, we have a particle diagram. Uh, it's an exothermic reaction that is spontaneous at low temperatures, uh, but it says to complete the reaction showing one of the nitrogen molecules reacting with hydrogen. So one of these molecules is going to react and um, it will split apart the nitrogens. But the other two molecules are going to stay together, so I will keep that together like this. Okay, and then um, the hydrogen, right, it takes uh, three hydrogen molecules because we're forming ammonia. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen atoms, um, or the three hydrogen molecules. Now we're left with uh, four H2 molecules that are still present in our container. 
So there is my complete um, particle diagram after that one nitrogen molecule reacted. Now for part B, it says, did the entropy of the system increase, decrease, or stay the same? And justify your answer. Um, so they did not indicate that there was any temperature change um, or volume change or pressure change, and it's still a gas. Um, so now we just need to count the number of particles. I have um, I have 10 particles on the reactant side and only eight particles on the product side because we rearranged them into ammonia molecules. So the reactants have a greater entropy, the products have a lower entropy. So the entropy of the system decreased because you have fewer particles present after that reaction occurred.